I saw the future of like, okay, when I graduate, it's not just going to be the one and done thing. The, the, the main reason why I joined the project as a candidate, even to, to go through it was because I knew, you know, it's a lifetime brotherhood, right? And so being able to connect with people, not just from my class, but people who are already graduated, you know, just savages on top of badass people who improve themselves daily on a con consistent basis. And that was really why I was doing it because I wanted that network of just meaningful relationships. Hey, what's up? I'm Steve Eckert, United States Marine entrepreneur and an instructor of the project. Welcome to the project show. This is a show for men in search of meaningful transformations in their family, fitness, finances, and faith so they can discover true fulfillment in their lives, achieving this through physical, mental, and emotional hardship and sacrifice so they can become even better husbands, fathers, entrepreneurs, leaders, and men. I want to welcome to the show a, a graduate of Project Class 005, Carlos Chare. And if you say it any different, he will want to fight you. You can't tell him Chare or Chair. <laughs> we call him Chair during the project, but he, he, would, he would correct you every time. And I like that about him. He w it wasn't afraid to stand up for himself and say it's cha he'd roll that that r like a motherfucker charre like churro exactly so, exactly so before we uh, well first introduce yourself where are you from what do you do yeah no appreciate you having me on steve uh so my name's carlos charre um originally from see, did you see that, that roll of the roll of the go. r you gotta roll the r i'm uh latino so um i live in temple city california that's near pasadena california um and uh right now i'm a marketing consultant basically do cop email copywriting um and uh yeah Awesome. So before we even get started, I got to ask you this. How old are you? What are you, 29, 30, 33? How uh, old are you? 22. Hold on. What the? First of all, what the fuck are you doing signing up for the project at 22? What do you do talking about marketing, consulting, and all this other stuff? Half the things you say, I'm 43. Half the things you say, I don't know. I have to go fucking look up in the dictionary. I don't even know what you're talking about. So what, what the fuck are you doing as a 22-year-old? And you graduated, I think you were 21 when you graduated, right? 21, turned 22 during the project. Oh, right. And you didn't tell us that until the graduation dinner. Smart move on your part. Oh, we would have had a fucking blast <laughs> with you. I don't know. Did, did someone tell you not to tell us or was that your idea? Uh, no, it was just uh, intuition. <laughs> smart move. Smart move on your part. So you're 21 years old at the, at the time, really signing up for it. You're supposed to be out there getting drunk, getting in trouble, getting in, in fights and getting all kinds of diseases and shit and, and chasing ass. What, make, what, what are you doing sitting here right now and signing up for the project, coming back to, to help? Just, just where, where are you at when it comes to that mindset wise? Yeah. So um, I originally went to college uh, when I was 18 and basically dropped out my first year. And um, I basically started my entrepreneurial career, started reading books, getting into self-development, um, you know, read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, uh, Think and Grow Rich, the, you know, the, the basic uh, generic books um, at a very early age. And um, that completely transformed my life. And so um, that took me onto an entrepreneurial route, started getting into business, um, some businesses that failed, social media marketing agency, started learning some skills. And, um, you know, three years later, um, you know, I'm now currently not doing my current, um, my own business, but I currently work with, you know, a mentor that I highly respect and am in his consulting, you know, uh, firm, you could say in his business. But, um, I was just at a point in life where I was not satisfied with my finances. And that was the biggest reason why I joined the project. Um, originally, this is a funny story. Um, I'm, I'm, I love marketing and direct response marketing and just business. And so originally, my original intention was actually, you know, I've been following Bajor's for a while, Bajor's Coolian. And um, I originally scheduled a call and went through his sales process to kind of model a successful funnel, mm -hmm. you could say, right? A, a sales funnel, meaning, you know, basically taking someone who's totally cold, that doesn't know anything about your business and you know you take them through this process. So you know what I'm talking about? I don't even know what the fuck he's talking about. All right, go on, go <laughs> anyways, on. Sounds interesting. Anyways, long story short, um, so I, I got on a call, you know, with with the setter, um, who at the time was, you know, one of the project uh, graduates. And uh, you know, I, I would write down his questions because originally that was my intention. But after the call, I was gonna have a call with um, you know, another one of the instructors to, you know, go through the sales process and close me. And there was a 15 minute period at that time, and I took a shower. And I was originally, again, my intention was to model a successful approach, but it got me thinking and this thought came into my head. And I'm like, you know what? 
I am really unsatisfied with where I'm at right now in life. Although I'm young, yes, um, you know, I've high, I have high standards and, you know, other people in my life, um, you know, did you, you already had started your entrepreneurial route? I had started, like, yeah. you know, obviously not, not a, you know, quote unquote successful in terms of finances, but, you know, had some failures, learned some skills and definitely, you know, got to know some people. But originally my intention was just, you know, you know what, if I go through this super difficult thing, it's probably going to be the hardest thing I ever do in my life. And if I do it right now at an early age, look at that edge I'm going to get. So that was really the intention. And so I made a decision at that point in my life, um, you know, in that 15 minute period, I'm like, you know what? I don't know how much it's going to cost. I don't know how I'm, how I'm going to pay for it. I probably don't have the money to pay for it. But um, you know what? If I want, if I want someone in the future to be an action taker, when I offer something, you know, I need to be that first. So I made the decision before even getting on the call that I was going to go forward with it. So that was that was my mindset going into it. That's awesome. Let me tell you something. You're you're a fucking badass. When I was 21, let me think where I was at when I was 21. <laughs> I was in the Marine Corps when I was 21, probably coming getting ready to go to do a physical fitness test after not sleeping all night in Tijuana, trying to convince myself that the burning when, when, when I when I take a piss is just a urinary tract infection, and deciding, convincing myself that's what I was going through at 21. So let me tell you, you're ahead of the fucking game where you are right now. Yeah, try to stay. I serious. appreciate yeah. that. So it was a very serious show. Very serious. So absolutely awesome stuff. You're you're you were on your way. Let me 22 years old. Holy shit! Like you were you were gonna go some places, and and it's awesome having you part of the team. What, what let me ask? What what was it that really, other than what you mentioned, that really made you resonate with what the project is about? Because this is not for everyone. This yeah. is definitely not for everyone. You see that, and that's what it's supposed to do. That the, the, the way we show the project is supposed to scare off most men, mm -hmm. but it's supposed to not scare off the, the ones like yourself. What was it? that really resonated with you, you said, you know what, I really have to do this. What was the trigger that, that really started? Yeah, no, that's a great question. So I think the trigger was basically what you just said. I mean, the the way it's presented, the messaging, it's it's not for everyone. And I think that's why, you know, for crazy freaks, like you say, um, I, it draws them in. And so I believe, you know, if, if I'm going to do this, you know, obviously people are like-minded who have that mindset, who, you know, um, endure suffering because ultimately they, they think it's beneficial for them. You know, I want to be around that, that type of people. And so I wanted to, I have a very close circle, really no friends. You know, I cut everyone who was basically toxic in my life. And um, this was a way for me to, you know, meet amazing, you know, constant, never ending, improving, badass intellectuals who also value fitness, right? That was a big thing. Faith, family, fitness, finances, what you guys mentioned. And so that really drew me. Um, and I just found, you know, if I do this, you know, I'll, I'll be able to have a network to be able to collaborate with for, for you know, in the future. So. Awesome, awesome. And don't feel bad. I don't have any friends either. I can't imagine why I don't have any friends. I don't have any friends in the world. So I don't know. if we, Are we considered friends? Yes. I think so. He called me the F word. We, the we, first person ever called me the F word and it wasn't fuck off. It was they were actually friends. Good stuff. So what was it? What were... From, from the time you were thinking about whether or not you were going to join, you first heard about, what were some of the fears or doubts or frustrations you had beforehand where you were you were thinking, what was going through your head? Do I have what it takes? Is it going to be too hard? What were, what were the doubts you had about about yourself or the program in general? Yeah, and and to be completely transparent, I mean, when, when uh, you know, Aaron, I, w I was on the phone with Aaron. He, he was the guy that, you know, ultimately closed me at the time. And um, he had mentioned the bell. Like what, what he said a question regarding like, what makes us think you're not going to ring the bell? And, uh, I didn't even know what that meant. So I thought, you know, you sign up for this and you got to finish. So I think that mindset, that's originally what was my mindset. And, you know, whatever you're going to pay for it, you know, it, it was probably one of the biggest investments of my life that I, I didn't know how I was going to pay for it. And, um, there was no fucking way that, that, that I was going to quit. Right. And so, um, you know, in terms of doubts and fears, my original thought, to be honest, I was excited. Um, I thought, you know what? I need a good kick in the ass. This is probably going to be one of the toughest things I ever do in my life. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm ready for it. I'm excited to be broken because I want to kill my inner bitch. And um, I was excited. So in terms of fear, it was just more so the, the pressure in terms of um, the financial investment, mm -hmm. right? And so getting instantly resourceful because the moment I said yes... Instantly, you know, Tim Grover has this saying that uh, pressure is a privilege, right? And um, instantly, that same day, I started feeling the pressure and how to get resourceful and how I was going to pay for this. So, um, so yeah, I mean, in terms of fears, I would say that was that was probably the only fear, but I wouldn't really call it fear. I would call it like a privilege. Mm -hmm. 
Good stuff. And and on that note, just for, for men out there that are thinking, oh my God, the project is so expensive. It's $12,000, it's so expensive. If you're 30 years old, 35 years old, 40 years old, and you're thinking that something is expensive, you can't even put a, a deposit down. You have to think about, you have to reevaluate where you are in life. The fact that you think that you can't afford something at 30, 35 is the exact fucking reason why you need to do something like that. If a a 21-year-old can come up with the resources to, to put credit cards together and borrow money for people and make it happen in a short amount of time. Think about if, if you're at your, your, a spot in your life and you've been in your career for 10, 12 years and you need a year to come up with $3,000. Obviously, the, the way you're fucking operating in life is not serving you. It's not getting you to where you need to be if you're at 30, 35, 40 years old and you're hearing this coming from a fucking 21-year-old that was able to figure it out. Now, I don't want to hear it that he maybe doesn't have the kids or kids going to college bullshit. If you've been in a career for a decade and you don't have $3,000 for a down payment, you're just, you're, you're first, you're just full of crap probably and you're really just using, holding yourself back as you've been doing your entire life. Just wanted to throw that in there. Hearing him talk and realizing that I never would have been able to figure out how to make that happen, how to make that investment at that age. I wouldn't have been able to consider it. Just, it's just impressive how, how far along you are. That's good stuff. So, all right, so you now, now you got registered, you got over the hurdle, you're, you're gonna figure out how to pay for this as you go. You probably got set up on some installments, that's awesome. What was your preparation phase like? Once you got over the hurdle in your head about the financial investment, how'd you start preparing? How much time did you have from when you got registered to, to your class? Yeah, and I, I, I think I signed up pretty late. I think it was like a month and a half. Um, until I, I went in June 2020, so class 05. Um, so there was about a month and a half. I was already in you know, somewhat good shape. I've always made that a priority and um, high value in my life. So in terms of uh, fitness training, I just started, uh, you know, Ray, one of the instructors, um, you know, he, we, I mean, we have the app. I don't know if you guys still have yeah, that, but yeah. you know, the fitness app. So I was doing basically those exercises. Um, um, but you know, at the time, we're, it's, it's COVID season right now and at the time of recording this, right? Um, and so gyms were closed. I didn't have access to gym, weights. Uh, what I did have access to was, you know, my body. I mean, even the parts Amazing. were- Amazing, My body, right? And so what I would do is, you know, Ray had these weekly, um, you know, I think he still does them, but like 1,020 pushups, 17 pushups every single mm -hmm. minute. Never done that in my life, but, you know, I joined one. I was like, holy crap. You know, I was sore after the first time I did it, but, you know, I'd do that. Um, some of the pro Project Brothers in the group, you know, um, I went hiking with one of them even beforehand to, like, this super big-ass hike, one of the highest peaks, San Jacinto in California, which is, like, 10,000-plus feet. Nice. Uh, so we bonded over that. I mean, that, that was even before the project. Um, and, and, you know, just, just doing something every single day. Um, you know, we would do, uh, what are they called, the Murphs. Um, but really just whether it's running three miles or, or, you know, just push ups for, for an hour at a consistent time or like, you know, imams every, every minute on the minute, you know, just, just small things over a period of time, but it wasn't really anything too drastic. Again, I was, you know, I'm not super overweight or anything. So that's probably an advantage, but you know, it was, it was just doing something every single day to get a sweat in. Good stuff. Good stuff. So six weeks about is what it sounds like you had from about, you yeah. signed up. So, and here's another lesson to the to men out there. The, the men that we're in, what month are we in right now? We're in February. We just started February and we have men telling us they want to wait till August or November to come into the project. We're talking about damn near a fucking year. It doesn't take that long to get in shape. I've been in the fitness industry for 20 years. You could do that in six weeks if you had to, maybe a little longer depending on where you are. So just lessons after lessons after lessons, like stop making those excuses. These, these things that you're letting hold you back from pulling the trigger, from moving forward, from taking fucking action are the exact reasons why you need to do shit like this. Like those are, th those are the faults that are holding you back. No one needs to wait from February to November. It's just, it just doesn't need to happen. So another, another good, good lesson right there. So let me ask you, let's get into the, to the program itself. You're there, you're training, you're right in the middle of it. What is, what is the part that just fucking sucked for you? What was your least favorite part of the experience of those four days, 75 hours? Yeah. Um, if I could be compl being radically transparent. Um, if you say that you just that couldn't fucking stand me, you wanted me to j drop dead, uh, then I don't want to hear it. <laughs> no, 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 no. Because I am the the nicest, sweetest, most gentle person there. I have have a foot rub set up for you every <laughs> hour. We have cold beers and we put fucking umbrellas in your water bottle. So uh, yeah, yeah. it better not be anything against me, but go on. No, you're definitely teddy bear of the of the experience. Um, no, the I would say the thing that that um, I hated the most. I wouldn't say hate, but uh, definitely the first day um, definitely was the most intense. 
Um, and I would say, you know, the pit for sure. Uh, going long distances in the pit multiple times uh, during a single day. Um, that was definitely probably the most, uh, the, the part I hated the most. But now that I think of it, it was, it was probably, you know, the thing that I appreciate the most. Mm-hmm. Um, another part was just, um, you know, the lack of, of, of sleep, normal sleep, right? So I remember the first day, even the second day, um, I could, I had to force myself to try to stay up even during lecture time when Bejos or yourself were talking. And I remember on the first day, after like the second time, you know, Ray's staring me straight. One of the instructors, he's staring you straight at the fa- at, at your face with this like killer look as if he's just going to like slap the shit out of you. And, um, you know, I just could not stay up for some reason, maybe because of the heat. And I'm usually not, not that person. And so just staying up and awake and being present for the experience, I think was, 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 uh, one thing that, you know, was a weakness for me. Um, and I even threw up the first night. Again, I'm not, I'm not usually that guy. And so it was just totally um, not expecting that. But, um, you know, I threw up the first night and, uh, you know, got it kind of out of my system. But staying up the pit uh, and uh, throwing up the first night just for, for various reasons. So, so Carlos is here to help out with classes 007 starts <laughs> tomorrow at noon. So, and the reason why I ask this question, we do these interviews right before, it gives me nice, fresh ideas. So I'm going to make sure to make note of this. All right, so we got first night. Put some more pressure on you the first night because I asked what's the worst thing. So I know how to give you a more pleasant experience in, tomorrow when you start your journey in the, in the project. So you could thank Carlos here for fucking that all up for you. We're going to spend some more time in the pit. We're going to fuck with your sleep even more. We're going to make sure that, what was it? What was the other one? Uh, I threw up for, uh, you know, maybe, maybe it was just being nerve. I don't know what that was from, but yeah. All right. Usually I eat clean. And so maybe what I ate from what you guys, the the delicious food that you guys served us is gourmet. It was uh, maybe had some effects after effects. All right. Awesome. Good stuff. So you're now you're in some of those tough moments. Just mentioned what are some of the tougher moments for you? What is it that, what is your trigger in your, what is your button in your head when, cause it, even, even if you never really considered quitting, there was a moment where it flashed in your head, like, why am I here? I'm just going to go home. I'm going to get out of here. What was it in your head that made you not quit? What was your trigger, your button, your not be a little bitch button that you had that would steer you away from that whenever you would get those little slight moments of weakness during the project? Yeah, I would say the biggest thing is just uh, the financial investment. It was one of the biggest investments that you know I had ever made, and there was just no... F- no way that I was going to quit. I didn't even know quitting was an option, like I said at the beginning. Um, and I remember Bedros said, uh, you know, he, had, he gave us a, a video, you know, when we were in the uh, original Facebook group. Um, I don't know if, it, you know, you guys still have that going on. But um, Bedros had posted a video before we all arrived. And he's like, this is how you graduate the project or something of that caliber. And he's like, either you're going to um, graduate or you're going to die. Come with that mentality. And so I'm like, okay, cool. Hell or high water, you know, I'll do whatever it takes to graduate, you know. Um, what's good is that you're not doing this alone. You know, I don't think you guys have had a class yet where there's only one graduate. So you're, you're I'm good. working on it. I'm working on it. <laughs> That's my goal. Just to, the graduation dinner is just going to be the fucking instructors and the junior instructors. Uh, it's going to be some good stuff. That'll be, that'll be, I'd like to connect with that guy. That'd be a fun person. Um, but, but, um, but, yeah, I mean, it was just that mentality. Just having that mentality. I think the biggest thing for people who do quit they come in with that option of, of saying, you know what, I either, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to graduate or, you know, there's that option to quit. I think that's fucking funny that most people that when we ask that question, they're like, it's my, my son. I, I would never be able to go back and face my son and look him in the eyes and say, daddy quit. I'll, I'll lie to him and say, I got injured because they'll do it. Yours is like, fuck, I just spent a shitload of money. There's no way in hell. There's no way in hell I'm going to go and volunteer to leave when I spend this fucking money. I'm going to do whatever. Like, I, I, that's, that's a great answer. And I, I, love th- it. I, I think to add on that also now that I remember is um, just the uh, – I, I think in terms of like second and third order con- consequences. I really learned that from uh, Ray Dalio, this billionaire. See what I'm talking about? Anyways. See what I'm talking about? I don't know what the fuck he's talking about. Go on. Anyways, uh, he consults like Bill Gates and whatnot. But um, what that means is, you know, if I'm going to take this action – what, what's going to result from that? And not just what, what, what's going to result from that, but what's going to result from that, right? So kind of like a second and third order consequence. But anyways, I was going to, what, what I'm trying to say is 
I saw the future of like, okay, when I graduate, it's not just going to be the one and done thing. The, the, the main reason why I joined the project as a candidate even to, to go through it was because I knew, you know, it's a lifetime brotherhood, right? And so being able to connect with people, not just from my class, but people who are already graduated, graduated and people like you, you know, who, who may potentially graduate, right? Um, you know, just savages on top of badass people who, you know, just improve themselves daily on a con consistent basis. And that was really why I was doing it because I wanted that network of just meaningful relationships. So that awesome. was another big one. Good stuff, good stuff. So when you start thinking back at the, the product itself, what are some standout moments? Not necessarily the, the, the achievement moments, but just the, the ones that you, when you look back, you're like, you know what? That, it's just, the memories, the funny memories, the funny stories you have. What, what is it that pops to mind? Something outrageous that happened that probably in the moment fucking sucked, but then later on, like a week later, you just drive in your car and you, you almost crash a car and piss yourself because you're thinking, you know what? That, that was like a, a privilege to happen. What, anything stand out? Yeah, um, I'd say for sure the, uh, I, I'd say two. Uh, the first day, um, you know, I don't know if you guys did this with every class, so maybe you guys could expect this, but the literally the first 20 minutes when we were at that crappy hotel, um, it's a hot summer day. That's that luxury. That's like a five-star place here in Chino Hills. Oh, yeah, five-star five place. For sure. I heard someone got murdered there last week, but I'm not sure. I think that's what you guys Stabbing. told us too. I, I wouldn't doubt it. But um, literally the first 20 minutes, it's a hot summer day. And um, I had originally got, um, I arrived late um, when the junior instructors arrived to, for check-in, even before the process started. And so maybe that was a factor. But anyways, the first 20 minutes, we were literally... On our, on our fours, you know, on our hands, in the hot summer heat, hot black gravel, gravel, whatever the term is, doing push-ups, doing, you know, bear crawls. And uh, I think you guys said you, could, you guys could start smelling flesh, fresh flesh. And so I had the worst of it, but I don't know if this was with other classes, but literally our hands were burning and our skin was, was basically uh, frying up. And throughout the whole process, you know, we, you know, it was... We had basically open, open wounded, uh, you know, second degree burns or whatever the third degree burns throughout the whole process. So it sucked. But so that definitely sucked. But, you know, now that we talk about it, so it was a laughing moment for sure. I'd say another part. Uh, we learned a lesson there that it, it, <laughs> on July class first, if we're going to give you those cooking mittens that you're going to use for when you do push-ups outside on the ground. Because oh, yeah. you guys literally did a set of push-ups and you came up and your, your skin is like peeling. Like, what the hell? That's never happened before. That was not an intentional part of the thing. But. Lesson learned, so now we have a bunch of cooking mittens. You're going to be running around these pink cutting, cooking mittens next yeah, time there we go. for the class. So you guys well, are the welcome to, to Carlos again there next class. Um, and I would say the just the other moment, if I could share one more, was um, one of the guys from our class, Serrano. Uh, he's a firefighter. Um, he thought it would be funny to, to, you know, you guys got the content team there, um, you know, recording, taking photos. Um, and uh, he, he thought it was going to be funny to smile for the camera while people were recording them and uh you instantly saw it and uh you know you did you did your special teddy bear stuff uh and uh you know we all suffered for it and um you know after our class when we got you know the highlights and whatnot i was looking through the photos and i realized you know what i found the photo he i have it on my phone but <laughs> i saw him smiling and he actually did it again and, and like I said, there was actually a second one. There was a second like some one. Some rock star thing. Yeah, yeah. With his tongue sticking out. And all I don't that remember stuff. if you guys caught that one, but uh, we we got punished for that for sure. I wanted to do that too, but you know, I I I think I was a little smarter. But you know, he did it regardless, so we got punished for that. But uh, I think that was that was definitely and that's a such fun a good moment. point. Like think like <laughs> he got to the point, and I'm sure you had your moment where you got to the point where you went over. You went. You went to the other side. You were over the edge of it being hard and, and the struggle, and you realize it is a fucking privilege, and you start having fun. Like, sure, he got punished for it. I never would have known about it. For the record, the, the media guy ran over to me immediately and said, hey, you might want to check this out. <laughs> Just because he wanted to stir the pot, I think, a little bit. So you could thank the guy behind the camera for fucking you guys over for that one. <laughs> so, but, but think about it. What, it. To me, that's fucking worth it, right? The, worth it for him to do that. Now he has that memory of that moment of just how much fun it was in the craziness and the chaos where everyone else is thinking that it's, it's so hard and suffering and learning to make those things enjoyable, like you're unbeatable then. You're you can't be defeated. If you could take the worst, the things that grown men are fucking crying and quitting and going back to tell their kids that they're a quitter from and you're able to do it with a smile sticking your tongue out, knowing you're going to get 
fucking thrash 10 times worse for it, but knowing it's worth it now for that moment. And now you have that picture and you have it to remind yourself of that same, same way. So that's just, a, that, that's an awesome moment. And I interviewed him a couple months ago because he was, he was back here all the time, as you know, and he brought up the same thing. We, we talked about the same thing. So that was, that was an awesome, funny. awesome moment. So now you graduate the project, you go home. What were some of the me? How, how, and you live right, you live close by, so not a long drive, right? Right. Yeah, like 30 minutes away. Okay, awesome. So you get back home. What are some of the immediate impacts that the project had in your life? Things that immediately implementable that you could actually insert right into your life, marching orders to, to have an immediate effect when you got back home? Yeah, I think the, uh, that's a great question. Um, I did a lot of reflection when immediately when I came back. Because again, I mean, big investment, at least for me. And um, I did that. I, I basically asked myself the same question and how I could implement what I learned. And the biggest thing I got from the project and um, things that I took away immediately and started applying to my life um, was the creed. Um, you know, memorizing that and living my life by that, specifically the first line. I mean, I'm a man of my word. I make a promise and I keep it. That alone forced me to just be super more aware and um, watch out for the things that I say and make promises for. And it, I just have like a sixth sense now whenever people ask me to do something, um, you know, I, I fall off sometimes, right? But it's very minimal. Um, and just following the creed, you know, um, you know you'll, you'll, you'll learn it when you guys come. But, um, and, and, you know, I won't recite it here, but I'm a man of my word. I make a promise and I keep it was definitely a big one. Uh, for me, um, as well as I would say, um, you know, the, 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 uh, you know, just having high standards of expectation for my life, uh, constantly, you know, uh, wanting to be the best to my ability, making sure that I asked myself like, Hey, was I proud of that? And if not go going back to, mm -hmm. to doing it until I was proud of it. Um, you know, and I just doing some, some, you know, average, average work regardless of what it, whether it's a workout um, and, you know, finishing strong or whether it's finishing up a project, um, you know, writing, writing an email and, um, you know, yeah, this is good. This is good enough, but let me make sure it's good. Is it fucking excellent? Is it excellent? Is it over the top? Exactly. Is it, is it going the extra mile? Exactly. Just having high standards of expectation from the little, from the littlest things. Um, and so, um, so those were definitely two. Um, let's see. Um, if I could think of um, what's another one. I'd probably think of it after, you know, after a few more questions, but just the simple fact, I mean, if you guys just did that, a man of my word, I make a promise and I keep it. You change your life right there. You change your life. Line. One yeah. line. Awesome stuff. I mean, that's how I joined the project. I mean, I told myself, you know what? I don't know the investment, but I'm going to do it. And so it kind of started that way as well. But, you know, it just reinforces and really in a dramatic way reinforces it. And not, I mean, now I have all these stories and, um, you know, anchors from the project that just make me remember that that one sentence. Mm -hmm. And so that was that was a huge one. Awesome stuff, awesome stuff. So then what were some of the, like that was immediate because that's something you can apply right away, right? That was so immediately implementable. You can plug and play into your life. What were some of the, the lessons that came later? Now it's been how many, what, four, how, how long? It's been, it been? like uh, six, six or eight months. That far already? All right, so six, eight months since you graduated. What are some of the lessons that, that kicked in later on, weeks later, months later, on a regular basis? What are some longer-term things that clicked in? Because that's, that's the goal of the project. Is not just to, it, this is not just a motivational weekend. You're not going to some Tony Robinson thing where you're jumping up and down and screaming and high-fiving and hugging a bunch of strangers and going home and letting that motivation wear off by fucking Tuesday. We're looking to make this a, a lifelong brotherhood of just kick-ass, motivated, hungry, successful men that support each other, have each other's back no matter what, looking to lift each other up without expecting anything in return. That's that's the goal of it. So we want those aha moments to come down the road, nonstop, all throughout your life for years, for fucking decades later. So what were some of the longer term effects and lessons that, that popped up later on in your life? And you were like, you know what? That's why we did this that specific way with that attention deal because of this and it, and it pops up in your life. Anything come to mind like that, a longer term lesson or effect? Yeah, um, I would say one of the one of the immediate ones as well, um, longer term effects was uh, Bedros had mentioned um, a line during the project, during lecture, and he said, you know, one of the most selfish things he does is sending a gratitude message every single day. And uh, that really stuck with me because I'm like, here's this guy, right? I mean, just one of the many, right? Um, here's this man, very successful man who, you know, I, I respect, right? 
and he's you know he's he's got the you know he's got the all the cool things he's got the family he's got the fitness fi- family finances whatever whatever yet he says the most selfish thing he does every single day is sending us a, a you know a gratitude message right um you know people could take that the wrong way because i remember telling that to my mother and she's like selfish like mm-hmm. and she had like a negative kind of frame to it but the selfish meaning for himself it's the most selfish thing because that makes him feel satisfied, right? And it's so simple and free. And so I started applying that as well, you know, send, sending selfie videos, um, you know, on a regular basis as well. And, you know, just w- people don't have to respond to it. But, you know, people, different people in my life, coworkers, colleagues, people who I literally just met. And, you know, that, that, that just one habit, um, you know, I applied from the project. And, you know, it's, it's one of the most selfish things I do as well. Um, and, you know, it's a start. It plants the seeds to amazing fruitful relationships as well. Um, so that was one thing. Um, another thing I would say is just the fact of doing savage shit on a regular basis. Um, you know, one of the reasons why I joined the project just in the original messaging, it was, you know, was increase your mental toughness, you know, your confidence, your self-discipline, uh, your, your great, your res- resilience or whatnot and originally when I came into the project I thought you know if I get through this you know I'm going to be confident I'm going to become disciplined I'm going to become you know resilient but the breakthrough that I got coming after the project it's just like with any course like you I've been to Tony Robbins concerts right or you know events see concerts concerts right I mean they're awesome right but just like with any course or event um you know uh it fades after a week. What you put in is what you get out. And so what I learned, a breakthrough for me, um, and it feels so like apparent now, but it wasn't, you know, eight months ago, was um, discipline, uh, confidence, mental toughness, grit. It's not a one and done thing, right? So if you're coming to the project to achieve that, great. It's going to be, you know, you're going to get that for a week. But if you don't constantly work at that on a daily basis, you're going to lose it. And so, just the fact of, you know, achieving this super high goal um, and, you know, once I achieve the top, then everything's going to be, you know, I'm going to be in a state of total bliss. It's not, that's not how it works. It's a constant, ever ending process. And that's, that's one big breakthrough that I got from the project. And so on a weekly basis, you know, I go on, on new, new hard hikes, which I didn't do before. That's a new hobby mm-hmm. of mine, you know, for the past 19 weeks. I've, I've gone on, on a hike, that's awesome. right? And a new hike that, and, you know, it's one of the, my favorite things I do all, all week. Um, another thing is just, you know, um, the benefits, um, you know, you have a brotherhood, right? A lot of people are in SoCal, you know, but pe- you know, this is a growing brotherhood and there's different people in different States. And if not, you could drive five hours to meet up someone for a day and have a kick-ass time. I mean, we just did a 130 mile bike ride. Um, even with your nine year old son, yeah, Tyson, yeah. I mean, that's insane. Right. And it was with like seven other of the brothers and it was one of the best days of my life. And so just having, the experiences over the long term, I mean, it's only been eight months and we've probably done, I mean, I've been to your house like four or five times. Maybe you don't do that with everyone, right? <laughs> but, and, but And think about that. I remember that the first time you come over was for a barbecue and that was only a few weeks after you just It was graduated. literally like, like that was two a weeks, weeks after, three weeks. I remember sitting there and just sitting back and just looking at the picture of everyone that's there and thinking like, what a fucking powerful thing that's here. Like just two weeks ago, you were crawling through the fucking dirt, probably wishing the death and destruction upon me. But it, it clicked in and realized that everything had a purpose. Everything had a reason. There you are sitting at, at the house with with my family. We're having a barbecue with a bunch of the other project graduates. Like that, I, I sat back, literally sat back and just actually took some pictures of it and no one even knew I was taken just to reflect on it and realize how powerful the project is. And going back to what you said about the gratitude text and the selfies, before the bike ride, you sent one to Tyson and I showed it to him the night before, right before we went to sleep. We only did it like on three and a half hour sleep because we had to get up at, at 1.30 in the morning. It's it crazy. crazy. But I showed it to him right before we went to sleep and he's like, oh, that's cool. And But it, it, meant, a, it meant so much to him to see that. The summer, he's like, why? He, he, it clicked in his head. Like someone's thinking of me at the right before the night before. They have to worry about going to this bike ride and they're thinking of me. Hmm. So it's a win-win, right? It's a force multiplier. It's, sure, it's giving you now as we send back and I'm like, Tyson, Tyson, appreciate it. Thanks so much. You're fucking awesome for sending that. So yeah, you're getting your like it's feeling good about doing it but he also is too so why that's such a huge thing it's it goes both ways that's a force multiplier so awesome stuff good yeah, stuff yeah and if i could share one yeah. more it popped into my head now it's um one of the biggest benefits as well is um you know you you mentioned in the project staying in the green right 
and uh, you know you show a graph of like you know up and down and then there's like a center um and what that means to me right you guys will if you guys get far enough you guys will um you know get to learn that but staying in the green to me means you know not being whether you win a Super Bowl champion like championship like Tom Brady did yesterday for the seventh time, or you know you you, you just lose someone that a loved one, or or you know you, you get fired from a job or whatever it is, a lowest of lows, right? Um, you know, get over it, spend twenty four hours or whatever, but then get back to the green, meaning get back to the center spot. The next day is a new day, win the day, right, and just keep at that and stay. You know, don't don't feel super excited about a huge accomplishment. Yeah, embrace it for the day. Um, you know, embrace the loss for the day, but get back and 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 start a fresh day with you know just a a, a brand new mindset. Um, you know, to to conquer and win the day. And so that was that was another huge win. And I, I'd say the last one just for now is um you know in the project, um the, the creed. There's 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 a sentence in there that says grovel to no one. And before the project, you know, I had this list of, you know, people that I want to be connected with, right? One of them was Bezos. Another one, let's just say Tony Robbins. People that I respect, a list, right? And, um, you know, originally, I, I, you know, I have vision boards or whatnot. I have their pictures on my vision board of people who I want to be in relationship mm -hmm. with, have this, you know, billionaire uh, circle of influence. And, you know, I'd look up to them, right? I wouldn't pray to them or, or, or praise them, but, you know, I would... I would do it to a level of extent, like, wow, how good would it be if I, you know, if I, if I could only connect with these guys, right? Um, but the sentence grovel to no one, over the period of time, I realized, you know what? Treat everyone as they're equal. Yourself compared to, you know, from, from, the, from the lowest guy who, who's on the street to the, to the billionaire, uh, you know, that I'll meet mm -hmm. tomorrow. You know, treat them with the same, same respect as if you would anyone. And, um, you know, don't, don't praise someone just for, you know, um, being this, this, this successful quote unquote person, but, you know, just don't praise anyone. I mean, treat everyone as your equal. So that was another huge thing that I personally got from the project. Awesome. Good so. stuff. Good stuff. You've touched on it already. What was, what does it mean to you now, several months later, just to be part of this brotherhood, to have this connection with just men from not just around, I mean, there's tons of us here in California, but all over the country, all the world from different ages. Like you're 22. The oldest graduate, I think, is 54. We have, a, I think, a gentleman coming tomorrow, I think 57. Another one down the pipeline, 59. So having that connection, what does it mean to you and how has it affected your life and impacted your life just to be part of this brother and have connections like this? I don't know if you've had those type of connections before, but what does it mean to you to have that right now? Yeah. Um, and to be honest, again, I don't think I've ever had that, that connection before with, with really anyone. Um, I realized, you know, the people that I value the most, the people that I'm most connected with um, and have a deep relationship with are people that I do really hard shit with, right? If I look at my life, those are the people that I value the most because I've gone through extreme suffering with. And so, you know, it's awesome because this is a brotherhood, a pack of savages who have that same mindset. You know, we, we call got it project that shit. Pro yeah, something pro goes wrong. Project that project shit. Project that shit. That's it. Like, you know, I've gone on 60 mile bike rides with you. I've, I've done 130 mile bike rides with you just recently in the past like two weeks. Um, you know, another, you know, we have our own WhatsApp group for our class and, you know, to stay connected. And, you know, Serrano, the guy you interviewed, uh, you know, a few weeks ago, you know, one out of the blue just says, hey, guys, you know, I'm doing a 10 mile challenge this week. If anyone wants to do it, you know, just just say, yeah. And so I was, I'm like, OK, cool. If I didn't have that, you know, that influence or that circle, you know, I wouldn't even have that thought. And so it forced me to get out of my comfort zone and just do like, I haven't ran a like, you know, 10 miles in months. And so I do it. It sucked, but you know, I did it. I felt, you know, again, it, it's one of the best days of my life when I do hard shit. And so it's that constant influence, even in the, you know, in our, in our connect group on Facebook or, you know, wherever it is now, but on, it's currently on Facebook, you know, just, just ideas of, mm -hmm. of hard shit and people willing to do that because they have that mindset. You know, if you go out, um, you know, if you look at your current circle of influence, you'd probably, maybe there's one or two people that are like that. I mean, th this is like a, a room filled with them and, you know, to get deeper connected with. So definitely have, you know, another, another experience even before the project, you know, um, one of the guys, Camaro, um, maybe you've interviewed him as well on the show, but um, even before the project, two weeks before the project, um, you know, I'm like, Hey bro, like, you know, you're young like me, Let, let's connect. I know you're in SoCal. 
um, there's this there's this mountain that I really want to you know I want to conquer. It's uh it's the biggest mountain I've ever done. It was like 20 miles, San Jacinto Peak in, in California. It's like 10,000 feet elevation. You know, it'll be all day. And he's like, yeah, I'll do it. And by the way, can I bring a 30 pound like a uh, a sack or, or a weight vest? I'm like, <laughs> now nah, you gotta do I'm, it probably. I'm like I'm like bring it, yeah. And so, you know, on top of and so, I, what I'm trying to say is. That's the type of people who are in this group, you know, it, and it's not just about fitness, but it's, it's all areas of your life. But, you know, that's, that's a value that I, I so you have now me. positive male peers, positive male role models. Is that something before the project that you had a lot of in your life? Positive male role models really? And no, peers? no, absolutely not. So, um, you know, meaningful relationships is huge for me. And, uh, that was definitely my intention going into the project, like I mentioned. Um, and so, my dad, you know, I respect my dad, um, but he's nothing like this, right? I mean, there's, there's, like you said, my dad's like 52, right? There's people that I could call brothers that are 52 mm -hmm. in the brotherhood, right? And, um, you know, so in terms of having that pack of sav savages, one or two one-offs and, you know, no one nearby maybe, but um, so, so huge, it, it's priceless, right? The, the benefits you get after graduating and, you know, it's, it's only the beginning really when you graduate. So, so the, the process of the project for you started first weeks before because you already were connecting with people, already leveling, realizing that, wow, I'm already leveling up my game and, and working on my personal development before you even showed up here because you, you connected with some other people. So you made some connections beforehand. You started training a little bit different beforehand, had a little different mindset for those six weeks before than the experience itself. And now seven, eight, nine months later, still having the continued effects of the project. So this is far from just a, we call it a 75 hour experience, but this is far from just a 75 hour event, one and done, and you're on your way. Absolutely, I mean, what you put in is what you will get out. Um, and so, you know, people are constantly wanting to create experiences to get deeper connected. And, um, you know, the, the, the huge benefit is just that these brothers inside this group, that's the type of shit that they love. So that's what I could say. But yeah, awesome. I mean, it's a, it's a never ending process. It's priceless. Good so. stuff, good stuff. What's something you would tell someone that is in your shoes Whatever the age, it doesn't even matter the age or maybe even your age. I mean, there's not many in your peer group that are thinking the way you're thinking. I mean, that's just a reality of what it is. But someone that's in your shoes right now that's maybe sees the project, they think it might be for them, but they're in the same position you were. Maybe they're having some deer, some fears, some some doubts about themselves. What, what, what's some something you would tell someone like that that was in your shoes? Yeah, um, I would say if you want, uh, if you if you value you know, meaningful relationships in your life and you want to surround yourself with, you know, faith driven, uh, fit driven, fit enthusiastic people, um, you know, who want, who want to achieve the best um, in their finances, in their family and really have a, um, I wouldn't use the word balance, but just a kick ass life um, in every aspect of their life. Um, I would say join the project. Um, if you're in my shoes, particularly, right? You're in your 20s, you know, even if you're 30s, 40s, 50s or whatever. Um, I would say, you know, money, it, money, money will always come back. Uh, experiences are priceless, right? And so whether it's a hefty investment or it's an e easy investment for you, right? Um, whether it's a time investment or wh whatever, um, you know, money will always come back and you could always make more money you're in control of that, right? And, um, you know, experience is priceless. And the sooner you get into this, the sooner you can start building relationships, the sooner you can start transforming your life. And, and really the biggest thing that I've gotten from this is just the experiences, the experiences, the, uh, the constant push, the, 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 the sixth sense of knowing like shit, even when I'm all alone, like I have that sixth sense of like, I want to become my best self because I'm in this brotherhood and even for the people who are maybe even lower than me in this brotherhood, you know, I want to inspire them as well. And I know if I'm not leveling up, I'm kind of doing a disservice. So it just automatic being a part of this automatically makes you want to level the fuck up. And, um, you know, I'm constantly putting in terms of, for instance, when people ask you your why, right? And people would ask me why, why I feel like I came to the conclusion, well, you know what, the older you get, I feel like the more why you could get, I'm, I'm so young, like I don't even know what my why is, right? But going through the project, that's been one of my biggest whys, right? To, to achieve in finances, to you know achieve the, the life that I ultimately want. Why? 
because I want to also inspire the people, you know, who are in this brotherhood as well, level them up, um, level the future people up like, like yourselves and, you know, just make this as savage as possible. Um, so yeah, that's good stuff. Good stuff. So, so men out there, you're, if, if you're 35 years old, 40 years old, you're getting fucking schooled right now by a 22 year old young buck on meaningful relationships creating and developing experience in your life, even how to have a mindset about money. And that's a great point. I mean, you're going to make more money, but you're going to lose that time. You're not going to have those experiences because we hear that on a daily basis. Uh, it's too much money. I can't afford it. And all the other excuses when there's always a way to do it and always a way to make it happen. So that was a great way of putting it. So let's finish off with you're, you're here again as a junior instructor for class 007 tomorrow. And we appreciate you taking the time to, you know, out of your life and out a week out of your out of your life to do that. What's a few pieces of advice, maybe three pieces of advice you'd have for that group coming in that's about to start their journey tomorrow? They're about to step on the yellow footprints tomorrow and get started. And probably that advice could be good for any man out there that's going through a fucked up day, a fucked up life, and things that they could probably use also. So, what are a couple pieces of advice you'd have for those guys coming in tomorrow? Yeah. So for for you guys coming in tomorrow, um, I would say number one. Um, Change your mindset real quick. If you're, if if you even have a thought of deciding, you know, whether I'm gonna, I could either graduate or quit. Take that mindset out of your mind, and don't imagine that a bell doesn't even exist because that's exactly what I did. And and I'm a firm believer that those who just come in with one outcome in mind, either you're gonna graduate or you die. Um, you're gonna graduate, right? Because that that you can't take that away from someone. Um, so num that's number one, my biggest tip to actually graduating. Um, tip number two is teamwork, right? Uh, in terms of, uh, being selfish in the project, like finishing first or, you know, putting out and doing it for your own selfish reasons in terms of, you know, just being the first one every single time. Um, a big thing is teamwork. So when you're, dur w when you're, when you're in the project, um, you know, each day, Teamwork is something huge and, um, you know, you'll develop your leadership skills for sure. Um, so I would just say, you know, um, step up, um, even though you're, you're probably tired or you don't feel like, um, you, you know, you're, you're the, the, the toughest guy in the group or, you know, the, the oldest or, you know, the most qualified in the group. Um, stepping up was one of the biggest things I got because I remember one, one, one part in the project where I had to be the leader and I stepped up to the plate. Um, and we got through an evolution, um, and it was a turning point in the second day in terms of everyone finishing, you know, the mile faster, a minute faster than, than what was intended mm -hmm. for, for each one. And so that was one of the biggest breakthrough moments. So when you can step up and you're asked to be a leader, do it. Um, and, um, because you're more so for your benefit in, in future premises, you can use that as an anchor for your life. And I'd say tip number three is, um, you know, just just um, positive affirmations, you know, just, just uh, don't be a negative pessimist. Um, believe that things happen for you, not to you. Um, and, and just have the positive outlook on life. You know, don't be reactive. Just uh, I, here's an insight for, to graduate. Last one, even though you're doing something good, like doing proper form on a push up, Steve or one of the instructors are going to, are going to mess with your head to see if you react uh, emotionally and you're only going to make things worse. In all fairness, your class was a shit show. We didn't have to make anything up. You guys gave us so many fuel and ammunition of all the fuck ups that you were doing. I, I could have sworn. We didn't have to pretend anything. I could have sworn the first day, you know, when, when we were doing push ups, like two hours in, I was doing proper form. Steve yelled, yelled at me to go run to the pit. And I could have sworn I, I was going to like talk back to him. Like I'm doing proper, but I, I shut up. And I just went with the flow. There's a process to this. Uh, you know, the instructors are dialed in. It's an amazing world-class experience. So trust the process. And even if you're doing things good, uh, you know, things are still going to go shit. But that's part of the process. So th those are my tips. Awesome. Good stuff. And let me tell you, I'm going to have to go back and watch the recording of this and take notes myself because we're sitting here and I want to keep writing down different notes that are sparking in my head while Carlos is talking. So I'm sure you got tons of fucking golden nuggets out of this right here that this episode alone, before you even joining the project, just, just this episode alone can help you 
it really can change your life just by listening to some of the things that he's t- telling and sharing about his experiences, about the, the meaningful relationships, about the creating of experiences and everything else he's mentioned. So I appreciate you doing that. Appreciate you coming on and helping yeah, out as absolutely. a junior instructor tomorrow. So where can we find you online or how, how can someone reach out to yeah, you? Yeah, I mean, quickest way to, to uh, um, I'd say go to Instagram, Carlos Charre, C-H-A-R-R-E, Jr., J R. seven R's there, seven R's, Charre. Two R's. Carlos Charre Jr., J-R, um, on Instagram. And that's probably the best way to connect. All right, awesome yeah. stuff. If you got any value out of this and this made an impact in your life, just please like and share this video and make sure you subscribe to the channel. We will see you next time here on The Project Show. You are fucking awesome. No excuses. No excuses.